So today I thought we'd do something a bit different. Today I'm going to be playing a training game. Uh, the game's going to be 15 plus 10, so sort of rapid, classical, a bit longer, so I have at least some time to explain my moves and my thought process. And also you'll be able to see me make the moves live, uh, because the games that I upload to this channel are over-the-board events. So I've had all my thoughts in retrospect, or I get to look over the games and analyse them. But here we are really going to be seeing me on the spot. Now hopefully uh, these games don't end in 10 moves, because sometimes that's what chess and sometimes people lose very quickly, myself included. And if that happens, I will just queue up for another one and play another one. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll get a good game. And not much else to say apart from getting into it. Um, hopefully the queue won't be too long. I will be playing pretty much my main repertoire because I am using this as a tool to help myself improve. And we can see myself up there. My opponent, we're about 2100. And yeah, not else much to say apart from begin with my f3. This is the main move that I play, as we <laughs> probably seen from all my other videos. f5. I actually thought about this before this video happened, about if somebody was playing the Dutch, because I did promise that I was going to make a video about this d3 move. And do you know what? I'm going to play it anyway and see what happens, because that would be good content for the uh, opening workshop video that I want to do. And the most played move here at lead chess level is knight f6 and this is where the fun happens um alternative moves are these two which sort of avoid the gambit and that's what it is and i had the most recent video actually in my four and cl is exactly this line and hopefully i've learned something from that i won't take away from a losing opening uh but yeah my opponent thinking a lot on move two which is probably a good sign. um i always like to look Okay, they're much better at me at rapid play chess or fast play, but rapid, maybe if I'm thinking a bit more, I can outplay him. I mean, there's not really much to say here, apart from hopefully my opponent makes a move. Otherwise, that would be an awkward beginning. At least uh, I didn't lose the first game, but it's over in two moves. Um, I hope they're okay. <laughs> So, yeah, well, the point of this series mostly is to help myself improve. I am trying to play in some more chess events now that I do have some money because I am working and I'm able to um, easily just join up. Okay, he plays e6. This is the sort of uh, more reputable way to play against uh, d3 as an opening. I'm going to play e4 anyway because I want to strike in the center. That's the whole point. And here... Uh, we realized that there was an improvement for me to make, I think. If my opponent plays knight c6, which is what happened in the game uh, in my 4 and CL, the idea is to take and then play e4, and that's the main line. Or I could play what I played before and sort of uh, use the ideas that MVL had. So we'll see how that goes. I'll probably link that game in the description because I'm actually going to be referencing it quite a bit because it seems like we're getting exactly the same line uh, that I got. Uh, about a week ago, <laughs> a week or two ago. So hopefully it should be fresh in my mind. My opponent is clearly out of book at this point, or prep, because he's already used two minutes. But there's nothing wrong with using your time. It is a 15-minute game. There's plenty of time to use. Um, lots to think about. So the main idea here for me really is to take. Uh, I Possibly I could have taken last move, and I probably should have thought about that a bit more. But if takes, takes, and then push in the center... I like the inclusion of the knight here as well, because um, it sort of dissuades him pushing himself. But perhaps I should have thought about that more. Uh, he's made his move. C5. Okay, well now he's... I'm not a fan of this move for him. He's made a massive weakness on D5. Like, the no pawn can attack this anymore. So this is going to be a problem for him. So I'm actually tempted not to take on F5, even though it's the thematic move, just because this is so weak. Uh, no offense to the square. <laughs> and perhaps also my queen can come out this way if I move the c pawn or manage to get my bishop out. But my bishop is trapped at the moment, so perhaps that's why I need to take and then push. But he is guarding me from pushing at the moment. So it's not a completely idiotic move, although it does look very suspect to me. Yeah. So the normal plan would be to take here, but in doing so I don't have the expense on letting my bishop out. Unless I could sacrifice the pawn. So takes, bishop takes, sack the pawn, he takes somehow, probably takes towards the centre. He's attacking my knight, but then I attack with 
the bishop. I don't normally draw arrows, by the way. I'm just drawing them because obviously it's a bit hard to say. I should probably say the moves itself instead. So e takes f5, bishop takes f5, uh, d4, um, cd4, bishop b5 check. And then either knight or bishop d7. My knight is still here. Now I just seem to be down a pawn and... Yes, I have better development, but his center is pretty strong, so I'm not a fan of that, sacrificing that one. Um, but alternatively, it's quite hard to open up my bishop. Although I could, actually, I'm seeing a plan now that I'm happy with. I'm going to take the pawn, and then I'm going to play g3 and bishop uh, g2, and then use this diagonal because this pawn has gone. And I feel this is quite a good idea, and I'm controlling these light squares that he's given up. And I'm actually quite happy with this plan <laughs> that I've come up with it. Uh, just castle, I see no other reason to do anything else. Uh, the other possible move is to play knight here. And I do have some nice ideas, but I feel like you can just defend the knight. We're in no rush, we're just going to get nice developed position. Use our fianchetto, <laughs> and then hopefully take control. So... There is a question of where do I put my knight, uh, my bishop. Ideally, I'd want to get this bishop off the board from him because it is his best piece. And I could go after it with knight h4. This seems reasonable to me. Also, it helps open up my queen towards his king and I can bring my bishop in too. That seems quite good. And it opens up my bishop on g2. Could also bring my other knight to the center with knight e4 and hope that he trades. Obviously, once I pin, but I guess he's controlling the square too many times, so I'd have to play rook e1 first. Rook e1 is the more natural move, I think, in this position. So it's a choice between rook e1, bishop g5, and knight h4, I think. Um, if I play knight h4, he's forced to move back to e6. Uh, is that a problem for him? I could take doubling his pawns, but I think that's better for him than it's for me. If he's forced to move back to e6, then... Then he might have some problems, actually, I'm seeing on g6. Because he has massive light square weaknesses, we can see all of there. So as soon as that bishop gets off the board, that's going to be really good for me. That's going to be my goal. Ideally, I wouldn't trade my bishop for his, but perhaps if I do that, that'll be good for the position. Because my bishop is really nice on g2. Yeah, so he does go to e6. And my point here was that perhaps I was going to play bishop g5, trade the knight, and then because this knight is controlling the light squares and this bishop isn't going to be doing too much, and then have an idea of queen h5 my plan. I am seeing now that you can block with the bishop on f2 because it's gone back. Alternatively I can just open up the position with f5, f4 sorry. f4 actually seems to make a lot of sense to me. His king's still in center. He can't use this diagonal too much against me. And I'm not weakening the e4 square because uh, I still have quite a few pieces guarding that. Yeah I quite like this f4 idea. I'm just opening up before he has time to castle. I guess his next move is probably going to be queen d7 and castle queen side. And then it might be a bit scary that I've opened up my king. I still like it as an idea though, just being aggressive. Plus then it gives my bishop a nice square to be on on f4 if he takes as well. And if he doesn't take, then I'll probably take him. And I feel like that's an improvement to my position. And he has these sort of two weak pawns. And yeah, my king's a bit weak, but I can always tuck him into h1. Uh, despite the opening, actually, I'm now being the one that's used more time. Probably partly because I'm talking. <laughs> and I'm not used to talking whilst playing chess. This is a new experience. But hopefully it will get me to flesh out my ideas more.
So if I was him, what would I put in this position? Perhaps castles. Castles, queen d7, all look good. Um, the problem is, is that he can't really take okay, this move. Um, I don't mind this too much because I can just bring my queen to e1. And my queen is much better placed. I am then threatening more pressure on e5 and supporting any e4 push from him. I could play bishop f3, but that doesn't really make much sense. And I don't want to block my bishop in with queen d2. So queen e1 seems pretty good here. Are there any checks? No. <laughs> it's always good to check for checks. Yeah, but queen e1 just seems like a natural move. And now we see his king is probably in some trouble here if he doesn't castle queen so quickly, so I'm expecting queen d7. Oh, he castles king side? Okay. Um, if I take on e5, he takes with the knight probably, but then his b7 pawn falls. He'll probably have some initiative for that, but I'm not too scared. Also, if, once I take with this pawn, this f5 square is a nice square for my knight because it'll be defended by the rook as well. So I'm liking the idea of taking it towards the center. I'm also trying not to use too much time because I feel like there's going to be positions in the future where more time is needed, and especially if I'm talking. A 10 second increment isn't a massive amount of time, so I need to be able to have time to think. I am freeing his bishop up a bit on e7, but I feel like this is justified because I am winning a pawn or some space. Okay, he does give up the pawn. Um, again, knight f5 looks like a nice move. Just applying pressure. I'd never take that bishop on c e7, but hopefully I might trigger him to take my bishop, uh, my knight f5 with his bishop, and of course his bishop is the better piece than the other bishop. That makes sense. <laughs> um, what other moves could I play here? Knight e4 looks interesting, because if he takes then I can take back, but then he takes my rook. I don't like that. Uh, I'd take back with the bishop, I guess, but... The problem with taking on b7 is he is probably going to get some tempo, but I don't really see what he does. I just have such nice control of the light squares in the center. And this f3 square is defended multiple times as well, so there's no chance that the bishop still defends it when it's on b7. So I think I'm just going to take. And my pawn is still defended back here as well. Um, I realized actually that I needed to be more careful of bishop uh, queen b6, because this is an idea to win my bishop, because I'll be in check. So if there's a way to blockade the C pawn, I might want to place a piece here just so you can't open it up against my king. I do have a check on D5, so that's something to think about in the future. I don't want to do it right now though. <laughs> His rook is attacked, so he must play rook b8. And then I can just bring my bishop all the way back if I want to. I think I will. I think the bishop's too valuable to give up, because I need to defend my king. Maybe open bishop e4. If knight takes, then knight takes. And I am just up a ball. I do have to remember that. Any end game's going to favor me at the moment.
Um, perhaps he's thinking of sacrificing his rook for the exchange, because that bishop is quite strong. That'd be an interesting idea. <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm really happy with my idea to play g3, even if it's not the main idea, but just the control of these light squares in the center has been really good for me, I think. Okay, he decides to go after my rook. Uh, no, I actually think my bishop is now, I know I've been saying for ages that my his bishop is really valuable, but I actually start to think that my bishop is better than his. It's just that his dark square bishop is so bad. So... I'm not a fan of trading. I could move my knight and to g2, which blocks the attack on the rook, and his rook is still hanging. Are there any tactics with me throwing in a check or taking first? Um, bishop takes rook, bishop takes rook, bishop d5, but then the knight is covered. So, that doesn't work. Sorry, the knight covers the d5 square, <laughs> that's what I meant. So the knight would just take, and then I have to take one of them back, and the other one would escape. Perhaps I can just improve my position. Play something like Rook F2. His Rook is still attacked. And I can bring my Bishop to F4. Don't mind that. Yeah. I probably should have spent more time calculating the forcing line with bishop takes a8. Bishop takes a8, bishop takes f1. And then... Yeah, the check on d5 I don't think works because he takes with his knight. And then his rook even guards the f1 square. So I'd have to take his knight and then his bishop would escape and then that light square bishop would probably be a monster for the rest of the game. Mm. Probably going to have to start speeding up a bit because I'm noticing that my time is now halfway down. <laughs> um... And he is a good rapid or quick play chess blitz. That's the one. <laughs> uh, this is quite an odd position. Just this backwards pawn on d6, but and his rough bishop on e7. But then again, my bishop is a bit underdeveloped as well. c1. Because of my light square weaknesses around my king, uh, when he attacks my bishop, I think I'm just going to bring it back and either trade or... Uh, maybe I'm forced to trade, actually. Because there's no other good square to go to, and I don't want to trade my bishop for the knight. If I'm going to be leaving myself with light square weaknesses. Not sure what he's thinking of. To me, rook b8 seems like the only move, but it's in the last position, so... Maybe he's thinking about attacking ideas. He 
His king is probably safer than mine in this position. Yeah, rook b8. Okay, so either bishop h1 or bishop g2. Bishop h1 keeps the bishops on, but then his bishop is really hard to deal with on h3, so I think bishop g2 is the better one. I don't want to go to a6 because then it's just out of the way. Bishop uh, c6 would blunder the bishop. Bishop d4, fly, <laughs> d5 would just lose the bishop. I do get a nice knight to d5. But I feel like he has a much better attack in that position, so I'm just going to bring him all the way back. And my next sort of moves are going to be moving this queen out of the way somewhere, moving this bishop out. Okay, he takes. I'm going to... I'm tempted to take my king, because then this knight can keep eye on this square. And he doesn't have any checks I can see because the bishops are gone. Let's go for this. I have now lost control of this square and you can push, but... I'm not too worried about that. He's not really threatening to come in just yet. I can also bring my... Knight here, so he plays this. That's actually a bit worrying. I can take the check. I am slightly worried for my lack of development. It's just where does this bishop go? I could block the file with bishop f4, but then. Oh, that's not a pin, I can just take it. A fork. Um. Bishop g5 is the other option. I don't, that one seems a bit more risky and I'm not entirely sure what my bishop is doing on g5. It does mean that the f5 square remains open for my knight because the rook will defend it. Also puts more tension on the position because it's attacked. Also, if my bishop moves this pawn, then you attack. Uh, maybe I just give it up. But then I feel like I'm letting him in, and that's not particularly good. I could play b3. That seems so sad and passive. Then I might should come this way, if you can cancel the other bishop. Well, that's a bit slow though with knight coming here. Yeah. So maybe h3. The g6 pawn is a bit weak, g3, sorry. Um, yeah, let's go for this. Just He's got both his knights eyeing up this square, I need to defend it, I feel like. And if g3 comes under attack, then I can always play bishop f4. Ideally, I get to move this bishop with tempo, so then b2 doesn't hang. <laughs> I'm looking forward to looking over this game, because I feel like it's been quite a rich position. Like, there's a lot going on. Perhaps I could have won many moves ago, but that's the case with chess. <laughs> I probably missed quite a few things, but that's how we improve. That's the point of these games. I guess that was the other advantage of playing King G2 is that the H3 square is actually defended. Which is a nice unintended circum <laughs> uh, circumstance? Unintended uh, bonus, I guess. Just off intuitive play. Okay. So he does have better development than me, but my pawn structure is better and um, 
I am actually up a pawn, so I just need to hopefully survive this position. And I feel like any end game will favour me. So if I'm saying that, perhaps knight e4 should be on my radar as a way to trade. But then if he takes, queen takes. Oh, then if knight takes, then I am drawing arrows in there. Uh, but I can take with the queen. Uh, he takes my rook probably at some point during that. Forces my king out. Uh, that actually might be a problem because then h3 might be attacked. So uh, knight d4, knight d4, queen e4, uh, rook f2 check, king f2, queen h3. Hmm. Okay. Well, now, knight e4 looks decent to me. I'm probably going to be ruining my pawn structure a bit, but I'm trading pieces, and I think I'm happy with that, and the knight on e4 is not really doing too much on c3 anymore. I don't want to move my king back. That just looks passive. Yeah, I've got to move. I've not got much time. <laughs> There's no way he can attack the knight with a pawn and also um, keep the queen attacking because obviously he can play d5, but then that would block the queen's attack. Maybe something like rook b1 to help prepare developing the bishop. Uh, okay. If I take with the pawn, he takes on f2, and if I take with the queen, he wins the pawn back with check, and that's bad. If I take the rook first, then take on e4, seems better. Although I do have some problems around the f file. Uh, it's hard to make a decision with such less time. <laughs> um, if I take with queen, takes... Taking with queen seems like the safer play. And I am just still up a pawn. Take with queen, he takes... He trades. He gets an extra check in, I'd have to move back. And then I don't see anything major for him, and I am just a pawn. But it's going to be a weak pawn on the e file. I feel like I have to move. Um, I want to keep queens on the board though, because then the games are interesting. <laughs> um, I feel like I've got to take my queen. I can't push as well because I take the knight. Obviously, I just have to take back here. He could take my rook and then it gives him tempo to move to the. Okay, he takes there. Uh, do I want to throw in rook takes? Would mean that I could develop my bishop much easier. That's no, I don't think I do. Mm. Well, there goes my better pawn structure. <laughs> it's likely going to be more drawish now with pieces off the board. Okay, he doesn't go for the road trade. Interesting. Is after my pawn. It's a bit hard to defend. Uh, might be actually impossible to defend. Hmm. 
maybe rookie two. You can't play rook f4. But does he have checks that have to be worried about? I don't think so. Let's go for this. This, I think, is where the game's going to be decided on tactics. He has the tempo advantage at the moment because his piece is a much better place. But as soon as I can play c3 and bring my bishop out, I feel like this is going to be much easier to play for me. It's just whether I have time to do that. His knight is being controlled at the moment. There's nothing too good for him. I guess he could play this, attacking this pawn. Oh, that doesn't seem good. Because now I get to move my bishop with a tempo. And I'm no longer hanging my pawn anymore. Let's go to this. Okay. I have to move our king because he's thrusting this move. I'm putting myself in range of checks, but I'll this check. Okay, so I go back this way. That seems like an odd move. Maybe to the F file instead. Seems more natural. But then I'm blocking my rook coming to the F file. I'm not a fan of that. Let's go King H1. That looks like an odd move and it's probably terrible, but I didn't like this check coming. <sighs> now he kicks my bishop anyway. Okay. He's not attacking my pawn anymore. I'm going to bring my rook over. It's probably not a good move because he can just play h6. I'm trying to make some back rank issues for him. But I realise that I've not underdefended the pawn, so he's not going to take anyway. Um... Where do I want my bishop? Let's go here. Trusting the pawn and checks. Hopefully, I can just bring my other rook to the file. He does have quite a nice square on h7. And if I lose too many pawns, I could just end up losing. <laughs> Okay, pawn is defended. Check, king h7. Uh, I don't see anything. Luckily, my bishop isn't trapped, but <laughs> it's close to. I do have to stop playing quickly now. <laughs> Sorry if I don't talk too much. Is off to the pawn. I will defend it. Goes off to the other pawn. Okay. Um. Take check here. Check. Uh. Yeah. It's whether I go for the attack. I don't think there's enough of an attack. That's the problem because it's because I'm only defending quite well. There's no easy way to pull up on g7. Can I push the pawn first before I go over? 
We should have perhaps. Yeah, this is not bad. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I think I just lost the game. Ah. No. Not only was that pawn defending that square, but now this is the only move. Ah. And that's, of course, just losing. I'm going to have to resign there. That is sad to see. I'm not going to turn the engine on. <laughs> Instinctively did. But just talk about the game a bit first. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> so, knight f3, f5, d5, d6, e4. Um, can you see the database? Yeah, you can. Um, taking is the most played move. E5 is the most played move. It's the best. Oh, yeah, black to move, sorry. Um, knight c3 has played, yep. Uh, knight f6 is the most played, but c5 is a sideline, so it is actually a move. And g3 is the idea here, which I did play, but g3 is played immediately. Interesting. So after knight c6. Four. Yeah, that looks a bit odd. <laughs> um, but yeah, this seems quite reasonable, I think. Let's develop. We're now back into master games. Castle seems fine. Bishop g5, knight h4. I did have issues with my development, so perhaps I should have... Uh, Move my pieces first before casting. Knight h4 was the top move. Okay. That's a good feeling at least. F4, top move. Okay. I'm starting to feel a bit better at this game. He takes f4 is the most played, and so you tap my queen. I move my queen over. Uh, I think this is okay. Let's see what the commuter says. Queen e1, yeah. It's about equal this position. Uh, he castles. I take. He takes back the knight. I take the pawn. Now. Slightly better for black. Yeah. You can see that he did get a lot of tempos against me. His development is just much better, and my king's a lot more in the open. Just this position here, with this check, I feel that... Because, as I've been saying, I'm up a pawn, and any end game's going to favour me. Even if the computer says it's zero zero, just because I think I have two pawn islands, he has three, and I'm up a pawn. So I wanted to try to get into a favourable endgame. So I played this. He took back. The move that I was looking at was rook takes, rook takes, but then I feel like I've just allowed him to develop more. I didn't do too much. If I took with the pawn, then he could throw in this move and I'd have to take with the king, otherwise this would drop a check and that'd be awful. I feel. So I'd have to take with the king, and then he gets this move in for free anyway. Again, I move back. And just this bishop and this rook are just not being developed. But game continues. He also took here again. I feel like this was a good practical choice because this bishop isn't particularly great, and this knight could come back into the game, and also it just ruins my pawn structure. And now we can see the problems in my structure. <laughs> He's just going to keep attacking me. King h1 is probably an odd move. Let's see what the computer thinks about it. Top move, okay. Top move along with c3. That c3 makes sense as well. Gets his pawn back. I have to move my bishop, I have to move it again. Then he infiltrates and... <laughs> I wanted to play for counterplay because that's often what you have to do in endgames, but it seems like he was the one with all the play. His pieces were just much more active. This rook on a1 is doing nothing. And now I talked about having two pawn islands and now I have four. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that was unfortunate. And then, yeah, this was just a terrible move. Not only does the pawn no longer defend uh, b3, which allows rook b3, um, but yeah. But what else to do? I guess I just have to give up the pawn. Or I go after this pawn, this makes more sense. Because he goes here. I still can't take the pawn though, because it's the same idea. Hmm. Okay. Well, that was my sort of initial thoughts on the game. And I'm going to check it with an engine, just see what the engine thinks, because I feel like you should always check the game first yourself. I realise this video is probably going on for quite a while. <laughs> Longer than my usual videos. But the opening was completely fine. I was happy with this. Um, 
Although G3 immediately is better. At, I'm going to look into that why play G3 now rather than just taking and then playing G3. I guess it allows this bishop to develop, um, which is not ideal. Get yeah, F4, good. Any one, okay. Take fine. Doesn't like taking the pawn, but okay. And if you're up a pawn and black is slightly better, then there's probably a slight issue. Um, so this is about minus 0.3 <laughs> from minus point, uh, plus 0.5, so it's not a massive difference. And the pawn's still a pawn. Kuita wants to play bishop g2 immediately. Rook f2, I think, is fine. Uh, rook over, bishop back, take, take. And yeah, black's just got too much initiative for the pawn. h3 blunder. Okay. Uh, why is h3 blunder? h3 is blunder because of my h5. And this is going to be an issue for me. Okay. Okay, g3 was a weakness and I couldn't defend it. And bishop f4 is impossible because the knight also covers the square now. Okay, so h3. Bad idea. But I was lucky he didn't capitalize on it. King g1 was just better. I suppose I don't have to throw my pieces into the center. And we learned that these trades just aren't particularly good for me. You can also play c4 here. That's a disgusting computer move. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, just take, take. Okay, this is 0, 0 0.0. So I'm up a pawn, but this is a completely equal endgame. So apart from one major mistake there, I'm pretty happy with how the game went. Um, defend the pawn. Take the rook, but this is sort of one move itis. You can attack my king back. I have to move my king away to the corner. Perhaps play c3 first, but yeah, this is just rough. And now, yeah, this is where it sort of gets out of hand and the game is pretty much over. Yeah, this is already minus six in this position. So it went from completely even in an equal endgame, me being up a pawn, to completely lost. So it just shows how unplayable this endgame is and how much like a computer you have to play. Uh, so I clearly messed up somewhere. H5 is the computer suggestion. Stopping rook g6. That's quite a high level move to see. But yeah, overall, sadly I lost the first game that I played of the training games. Uh, but I think this game is quite instructive as well. I learned quite a bit. And um, I was pretty happy with the opening. Just uh, this middle game position. I needed to spend more time calculating. Um, and taking the pawn, I think, was perhaps not a good practical attempt. Uh, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>